Well, it's a beautiful Tuesday morning on May 28, and we've just finished watching a cracking round 11. I'm on my way into AFL House for the first of three All-Australian meetings for season 2024, and I have the privilege of bringing you and the Fox footy cameras in with me. We'll talk about hundreds of players from all of the 18 clubs, and we'll try and distill those players down to a squad of around 60 or 70, so that we can choose a balanced team of 22 at the end of the season. You'll hear the term lock. Now, that probably refers to a player whose first 11 rounds means that he's very likely to be in the team, but there's still a lot of football to play. You'll hear the term watch, and that would refer to the majority of players that we think we need to keep an eye on as the season progresses. Now, this is Andrew Dillon's first time chairing an All-Australian meeting, and I know he's a stickler for punctuality, and we're already late, so let's get in there. Welcome, everyone. Um, before we officially start the meeting, I just wanted to welcome um, two new selectors, so Abby and Josh Marnie. So welcome to the uh, selection panel for this year. Got an apology today from Matthew Pavlich. I'm the um, non-voting chairman, according to the, um, the charter that we have for the All Australian. And unlike some predecessors, I will take that um, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to just take you through, um, just at a high level, what, what the Charter says. And so, just as a reminder, to be eligible for All-Australian selection, um, in any given year, the player must have played at least 70% of the AFL home and away season. So that's at least 16 games in 2024. The All-Australian team should be reflective of an AFL team selection with similar makeup of positions and interchange. So the, the plan for today, or the aim for today, is to um, try and narrow that number from the 80-odd that we've got to a squad of roughly 50 to 60. Was that it, Ned? Yeah, by fleshing it out to sort of 50 to 60, we want a bit of a balance there. So what we don't want to end up with, if we've got 50 players, is have 40 midfielders. Um, make sure we have a decent, um, decent discussion around what the structure of, of what the final side might look like. Jacko, when you look at Frio, is there... Who would you get rid of? Who would you be definite? And who would you have in, um, in the middle? Caleb Sarong's been their best player. Mm. Um, I put Alex Pierce as the fullback in my list. His first five rounds, his one-on-ones um, were, you know, in the order of what Sam Taylor. It's interesting because Sam's missed a few games, but they both had about the same coaches' votes. Yeah. Mm. So if Sam continues this trajectory, uh, uh, it's going to be interesting. I think they're the two for the fullback position at the minute. Um, Luke Jackson's a watch behind Brodie Grundy and obviously Max Gaunt, but he's a watch. He's got uh, Sean Darcy. That their ruck combination's not working at the minute, so he's, he's playing 40% ruck then going forward. And he's, yep. the week before when Darcy wasn't there, he was best on ground in the ruck. So it's a real, it's balance. A real shame. It is, because yeah, it it's affecting his... So I'd have um, those three. Um, Hayden Young is a watch. Luke Ryan, I've got him on the half-back line. Um, rakes a heap of possessions up, takes a lot of point kickings and plays on. But what I like about Luke, he's been consistent over the last three or four years. He was an All-Australian a couple of years ago. We're happy to leave that for the moment. What do we think, um, Kane, about Collingwood? I've loved Darcy Cameron's year. Not a, not a lot of people have spoken about him, but I think if we're narrowing it to three or four rucks, I think he stays. Um, for me, I don't think Josh has had the year that he had last year, um, but we're always looking for wingmen, and he's probably the best wingman still in the game. So depending on how we want to do that again this year, Nick would be a lock for me to go. He's injured and won't qualify. And Pendlebury's been great, but if we're going to look at midfielders, I think there's probably um, more damaging midfielders and more consistent midfielders across the board. What do we think? Everyone comfortable with that, Jacko? Pretty comfortable with that. Josh, Josh um, is a watch. Nick's a lock. Nick's a lock. Yeah. yeah. It's a pity Checkers is injured because I just think yeah. that... Yeah. yeah. He's been flying. Well, if he comes home with an absolute rush, we could reconsider, but I don't think he's... He's probably going to miss out because he's just going to miss so many games. Do you think that Darcy Cameron's in a better position now than I would say most of us would probably say Max Gorn would be locked for the ruck to date? But do you think Darcy Cameron's in a better position than Grundy? Marshall Grundy? Grundy. Grundy I'd say Grundy second, yeah. Marshall third. 
I think there's probably a number of rucks ahead yeah, of him. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, he's right. Like, yeah. I think in terms of if you're going to rank them, but mm -hmm. I don't want to eliminate him because no, we need away. a yeah. squad. And yeah. who knows, like, Gorn looks a bit banged now. He could get injured. Yeah. And when we, you know, so yeah. I think it's too early to eliminate him, but I think what you're saying is... If we're at 65, we need to get down to 60, he might go, but yeah, let's, yeah. let's, let's wait till we get there. Yeah. 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 Just on one stat that he ranks, really, he's the number one intercepting marking ruckman yeah. in the game mm. this year. So his ability to be a strong presence and yeah. his intercept marking is one of the key stats. He's the best at it from any of the rucks. Okay. Gold Coast had wits as well. Would wits be yeah. in yeah. that group of rucks? Mm. Do you want to run us through Gold Coast then, um, Josh? I think Noah Anderson, I think he's, he'd be pretty much nearly a lock for me. Mm -hmm. um, Mac Andrew, we're just seeing him getting better and better. Like he's, he's probably a bit below it at the moment, but he's probably a watch that he could come out and well, what the job he did on Kuno in the first half. Is any indication of his back after the year? It's going to be pretty impressive. Um, Flanders has been very good. I think he's improved a lot this year. Um, I'd probably have him on a watch at the moment. Yeah, ben King's in the mix for me for one of the tall forwards. So I'd have him as a watch. Well, he's leading the goals. Yeah, he's, 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 he's leading, leading the goals. goals. Yeah. Yeah. Gold medal. Mm -hmm. Matt Rowell's in the mix as well, mm -hmm. I think. I think he's on the watch. And then Wits, I think, in that group of rucks that we spoke about, he's probably in the top five rucks for us. I'd keep a watch on Jared Wits. This time yeah. last year, we were really seriously considering him. And he's been consistent over the last yeah. couple of years. And he's a mature bodied ruckman now. He's right at the peak of his powers. I he's, think he's, Flanders he's, needs to stay in as a watch. A watch? Okay. Yeah. Like that, that high half back flank could be the one. I think in the end, I mean, if you look at yeah. you know, Clark and Flanders, oh, there's not Houston sort of been around, we'll get there, but yeah. I reckon that high half flank position, Dacos shouldn't be in that anymore. Now we might end up moving there to. Flesh out the mid. He hasn't played much. This time last year, Dacos played a bit half back. It was mostly. Yeah. Um, but there probably hasn't again. been as many Nick Martin, <laughs> maybe, when we get there. But yeah. Mm. Yeah. Flanders and, and Clark have been two of the better players in that role. Bucks, you want to take us through the Bombers? Right. I think Zach Merritt's a lock. Mm -hmm. um, I think Martin and Mackay have been excellent. I love Sam Durham. I think he's a out. great club player. I don't know if he's quite at all Australian level yet. Yeah. I love him. Um, Langford, I reckon, needs to be in there and stay in there to see what the back half of the year looks like. Yeah. If he has um, a massive back end of the yeah. year, well, it's like players anyway. can come yeah. back in. Yeah. I mean, he may not be on the watch list, but we know that we've had a discussion with him in yeah. round 10, around 11. Correct. And if they finish top two and he's a big part of it, well, yeah. in round 20, we'll be talking about him again, so... But at the minute, so what are you suggesting? You just put a line through him now. Well, no, no. Or, or you just no. take him off. Of, uh, he's not in the squad of sixty, and he needs to earn his way back up. He'll do that himself. Yeah, yeah. No, I reckon if past. we got if we got to sixty-five, and we're yeah. looking for a couple to bring it down. I reckon. Yeah. He, yeah. Andy McGrath's jumped yeah, out of the ground yeah. for yeah. me. Like I've been really impressed with the way he's played, and and if you were looking for a back pocket, that. Or a small small back that was legitimately playing his role well. I, very I, good. I think mm -hmm. you need to keep very him good. in. That stringer. Uh, just on stringer, eight for scoreboard impact, twenty-three goals. So scoreboard impact, goals, points, goal assists, total impact, eighth in the league with one hundred and eighty-four. I don't think he's all Australian level, but watch. Yeah. Watch. Just well, a, yeah. it's just a, it's a favourable start yeah. if, well, if you're looking at him. So the Swans at? Where do we even start with Sydney? Yeah. <laughs> you keep the one start. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I have Warner and Heaney as locks. Mm. I have Errol Golden on the wing. Um, James Rowbottom, just hard nose, probably not there at this point in time, but definitely a watch. Um, Brody Grundy, watching that rock, rock roll, I've loved what he's done this year. He's effectively another midfielder when the ball hits the ground, but you can't put him, of course, in front of Max Gorn at this point in time. Nick Blakey, his run and carry off half back is always going to be crucial in that position, so I have him in there at the moment, but there's certainly a number of other half backs that are there alongside him. Um, and then Haywood, an interesting one. We know that he can pop up and absolutely dominate games, but for him, it's probably that consistency piece as it is with all of the forwards 
yeah. um, which is hard in in that position. So um, if he can pull together a quality season consistently, then I think he absolutely is in that conversation. But um, yeah, it'll just be if he can maintain it. What do you reckon, Jude? Florent has been pretty damaging off half back. Like yeah. his actual impact has yeah. been probably. I think champion data came out the other week, and so I said more impactful than Lakey with Blakey. ball in hand. Yeah, um, I agree. So, Laura, West Coast and Western Bulldogs will give you a, mm -hmm. eight players there to deal with. <laughs> um, for West Coast, I had Waterman in my team. I really like him, so yeah. I had him as a lock. Um, for this point in the season, I think he's super impactful. Uh, and with Harley, they're building something around those two. Um, McGovern I had as a watch. I wasn't sure about Barras and Yo. Jake Waterman, is, he's been outstanding. I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> he's been Where a lot. Why so, do we go McGovern, Barras? Because I reckon Barras loses kudos because of McGovern yeah, next time. Yeah. Tom is purely locked down intercept. He gets it and he'll just 10 metre kick to the right. Is Duggan... Is Duggan... Duggan's been good, but... The, the, there's a lot of Duggan type players, beautiful left footer, uses the ball. He's been, he's probably in their top three or four in their best and fairest. But is he, does he go ahead of Dan Houston? Does he yeah. go ahead of a few of the other players that we've spoken about? So you can put him in as a watch. Sure. Um, Bulldogs, I had uh, Bontempelli in my team on the bench. I had him as a lock because I think he's been really good and really impactful. But I think I've sort of asterisked it, just pending where we land on different positions and what we need to use the bench for. Should Bailey Dale be on the list? I think he should. He's definitely a watch for me. He's in terms of in damaging halfbacks. I'd have him right up there. <laughs> like Sydney, the best team in the comp, go and tag Bailey Dale yeah. on the weekend. Like I think his numbers are extraordinary. Agreed. I'd put Ed Richards up before. And Ed Bailey Richards Dale. is coming hard. Like a bit different positions, but yeah, but he's missing, he, and he sort of had a bit. He missed one and then missed another one. And he was, miss, but as a halfback, he was excellent. He's and then as a midfielder, he's, he's been excellent. Like, I really love what the season he's putting together. Do you want Richards as a watch at this stage then, Bucks? What do you think? I would, yeah. yeah. So so going to know where I Eddie, do you want to have a go Port Adelaide, Richmond and St Kilda? Yeah, it's, yeah well, we'll go with St Kilda first. Uh, Marshall, Callum Winky. Marshall's numbers are going to look really good because yeah. he grabs the ball and he gets huge clearances, but I'm not sure they'd go anywhere. Like, he just <laughs> grabs it and kicks it forward. So your best three ruckmen are Gorn, Grundy, Grundy. Wits. Yeah, yeah. Watch. he's probably fifth. Yeah. Darcy yeah. Cameron. Darcy, 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 sorry, Darcy Cameron. So there we got four. So and if we only go one ruckman... Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Long way back. I had Brad Hill as a watch. Like, the best footy they've only played snippets. He's involved. If they come good to back half the year, I think he'll be involved heavily. Tigers. Yeah, with with Blossom, I think he's holding his own down there. He's been good. He's, he's, he's the best yeah. intercept mark nearly in the competition. Tough man entries. They, they get in there. In there. I've liked I'll say, I'll watch. say watch. Yeah. But he, he deserves to be there on the form this year that I've seen. He wins his one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. If we're good decision 60, under yeah. pressure. In the top six. Yeah. Top yeah. The yeah. 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 I'm, I'm happy with him yeah. to be there yeah. and we've still got half the year to go. So. Yeah. And then Port Adelaide. And yeah. Zach Butters has had a super year. You know, Jason Orr Francis is having an amazing year. Like, the way that he played last week, dominated against North Melbourne. Dan Houston off half back, Frank Storm, really well. Connor Rosie, injury. They're the, they're the three, Butters. Top yeah. three. North the top Francis, three. Houston, yeah. yeah. You the same, Jude? <laughs> yeah, Butters uh, as a lock, but then mm. watch on Houston. Um, Horn Francis. I'm okay. the same. I had Butters as a lock, and then Horn Francis and Houston. GWS, Jude. Yeah, so I had um, Jesse Hogan in my team as Locke and Lockie Whitfield. And then I had Watchers on Tom Green. Is there been a really tough one to judge because they're four dramatic yeah, four, yeah, four, four, four weeks. Like, we're doing this four weeks ago. Yeah, very different. <laughs> very different. Um, I thought Toby Green's been right off at the start. He's come good in the last little bit, so I didn't have him, put him in, in this bit. Who's that? How can they put I had a watch on Sam in. Taylor. Yeah. Josh Kelly was there, but he's going to miss six with the calf, so I didn't have him in. And then uh, Jack Buckley as a watch as well. What do you think, Abby? I think Tom Green started well and has probably faded out a little bit um, throughout the middle part of the season. Jesse Hogan I had in 
Um, and then a watch on Sam Taylor uh, and Lockie Whitfield, as you said as well, Jude, he's up there too in the conversation. Yep. It's a pity that Lockie Ash got injured because he and, was flying. And, Ke and Kelly, like on the wing. He yeah, well, Ash was flying in that yeah. role. Yeah. He's so probably, probably almost a bit Ed Richards feel like yeah. Yeah. if he comes back in and absolutely <laughs> dominates. So you wouldn't watch Toby? You always got to watch Toby. <laughs> like just we'll watch at the Toby anyway. <laughs> I mean, he's always going to be a watch, being Toby Green, but... He'd have to do but something. Just in terms of recency yeah. bias. Yeah, exactly. He'd have to go. He's, 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 he's for his first, first half. Yeah. So I agree. Like, well, well, he's watch his position. He doesn't... He, he, he hasn't earned it. Play. He had a really good game on the weekend. He's probably had one of those when he normally has six. Mm. Yeah. yeah. At and the I'm, same time. I'm just trying to categorise who's in front of him right now. There's a lot. Well, I'd put Stringer in front of him. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I know I agree with that. But because they play a similar role, yeah. but yeah, we'll let's let him change yeah, our mind. Yeah. yeah.